Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. I hope that you are all doing well. I'm doing okay. I am on day four of no coffee, which I'm very impressed with myself about. Uh, it's actually been going better than I expected. I've been having a little bit more of a low key week just to, you know, go through this adjustment period. Um, so we're doing a more relaxed video today and we are going to be talking about my updated Monstera collection. So I think I have seven or eight different types of Monstera and I'm really excited about this video because Monstera is a genus that I feel like I didn't really appreciate before. Like I just had the main ones. I had Monstera Deliciosa, my variegated Monstera. Um, and my Adansonii. Do you guys remember my Adansonii that I used to have on the big moss pole? Um, yeah, and I didn't really branch out to any of the different species. If you are new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. I would love to have you. I post a lot of houseplant related videos. Also give this video a like, it really helps me out. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna do the ones that uh, live in my cabinets first because I wanna pop them back in there as soon as possible. Uh, so let's just, let's just start with this one because I'm obsessed with this one lately. Um, okay, so this is my Monstera Obliqua. I feel like this is like a wild one to start with. This is the newest leaf and I love it so much. Look at the fenestrations on her. Oh my goodness. Um, this plant is unbelievably easy to grow so far in my experience. I've only had it for a couple of months. Um, but first of all, it suffered absolutely no shipping damage from being stuck in the mail for almost a month, I think. Gosh, it was stuck in the mail for quite some time. Um, but it, it literally still has the oldest leaves that it had when it was shipped. Um, and it's given me three new leaves in the past two months. And you can see there's actually a new one coming in there, which I'm very excited about. I still can't believe that I'm growing this in my home and I am equally as shocked as to how uh, fast growing and easy it has been for me to grow. I think it's so beautiful and I'm just so excited to watch the leaves get bigger and bigger. You can already see the progression, like how, um, how big, how much of an increase in size there was from, which one was the last leaf? This one, this was the last leaf and then the newest one here. So I can't wait to see that one that's coming out right now. Like I said, this does live in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet, which is sitting at, what is it sitting at right now? 85? It, they typically sit at around 85% in there and I just water it when it gets dry. I have not repotted it yet. Um, I actually went to repot it a couple weeks ago. I pulled it out and looked at the roots and it did not have enough roots to warrant a repot. So I haven't repotted it yet, but it's honestly just been doing so well. Like, I'm very surprised. I was nervous about this plant when I received it from Botanicas. Thank you again, Botanicas. I still can't believe that package that I received in September. Um, yeah, I was nervous, but honestly, like, I'm feeling really good about this plant and yeah, it's just doing so well and I'm so happy to be growing it. So that is the first one, Monstera Obliqua Peru form, Peruvian form. Okay, next is another one that lives in my Kia greenhouse cabinet and that is my variegated Monstera Adansonii who I did repot and put on a moss pole hoping that it will grow up this moss pole eventually. Um, yeah, so this is what this one is looking like. This has also given me, I think three? Yeah, three new leaves. It's working on a fourth, if you look back there. So this one was shipped to me in the same, the same shipment situation as the Obliqua. Um, and this one did suffer shipping damages. As you can see, it does have a lot of browning on leaves that were shipped. So that happened a couple of months ago. The new leaves look pretty good. I'm still just shocked that this plant made it alive and it immediately started growing once I unboxed it, unboxed it as well. Um, that damage is just kind of, you know, expected with a plant that's so highly variegated being stuck in a box, shipped for a month. So, um, so yeah, that was to be expected, but I'm so impressed that it's been growing now. This one I'm a little bit more like worried about. 
Um, like the oblique one does not stress me out at all. This one stresses me out a little bit. Maybe it's gonna be super easy, I don't know. I mean, so far it's been okay, it's growing. I guess just because it's variegated, it stresses me out. And I feel like there's really not a lot of information about variegated Adansonii. Like on YouTube, there's a few videos that give care tips, but a lot of them are in climates that aren't similar to mine. And yeah, I just found it kind of hard to find people's experiences with them. Um, but that being said, it is living in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet, so it's getting high humidity um, and good lighting and everything like that. So I think it'll be fine and I'm so excited to watch this grow. Like this is going to be so cool when it is a larger plant one day. Again, I feel so lucky to be able to grow this in my home and this specimen in particular is just so pretty. Like the variegation on this is absolutely stunning. I am a little worried. I hope it starts giving me a bit more green. Oh, it actually looks like it is. If you look at that newest leaf, um, it looks like it has a good amount of green. So that'll be good. Can't wait to see that. Again, I don't do anything too special with this plant. Uh, if anyone has one of these and has any tips for me, leave them down below. I'm just curious to hear other people's experiences. Maybe it'll help me not stress so much about this plant. But long story short, it seems to be adapting to my house well. And um, yeah, it's been basically consistently growing, which is awesome. Okay, so the next one is my beautiful Monstera Peru or Monstera Carstinianum. Still uh, sitting at three leaves here. Long story short, if you have not been on my channel for a while, this completely rotted. I received this plant, oh gosh, like a year and a half ago, maybe even longer, maybe coming up to two years. I received it quite some time ago and um, it completely rotted on me multiple times. I was trying to regrow it from a wet stick multiple times. I had to keep cutting the stick down less and less and I was finally left with this like tiny nub, like barely anything. I thought for sure it was a goner and then it put out a leaf and it's been growing ever since. It does live in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet and it seems to be happy in there. I have it kind of like shaded under a shelf in there because I've been told that they don't like a lot of light and it seems to be doing well with that. I'm waiting for it to give me another leaf. The roots look healthy. Um, I've heard other people say that they've had problems with their Monstera Perus rotting as well. So I'm not sure if that is something that is specific to these guys, like a particular problem with them, but it's definitely been a problem with mine. Um, so yeah, I'm just very cautious about not letting this go bone dry for too long and not overwatering it um, because I don't want to deal with that raw issue again. I do really love this plant. Like look at how beautiful that is. The texture and the deep green is just so pretty. Eventually I will be growing this as a climbing plant. Does everyone grow them as climbing? I feel like I've seen these trailing before which might be cool as well, but I do want to get the big leaves, so yeah. Anyways, Monstera Peru, thriving and happy. This is like my miracle child that I thought for sure was a goner and made a comeback. Next, we have one that I've been struggling with recently, and that is my Monstera Standaliana. Let me try to get it at an angle where you can see the leaves. So this is what it is looking like. Um, oh, this is the Albo variegata. It's the white variegated one. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of variegation. I mean, on some of the leaves, the variegation isn't bad. If you look at these ones. Yeah, so this plant I have had since the summertime. I was inspired by, I think it's Abby Bloom. I saw a really beautiful one on her channel and I was like, oh my goodness, I need that plant. So I got one for myself. It was actually about this size when I, or no, maybe it was like up to here. Like it had maybe five or so leaves when I first got it in the summer. Gave me a couple more leaves, was doing awesome. And then suddenly all I was getting was runners. Just runners, runners, runners. I gave it a pole, I gave it lighting, humidity. It lives in my cabinet and I was still only getting runners. It was like wound around here, you guys. I feel like I repotted this on, did I repot this? I think it might've been for a Patreon video. Not pot, propagated. I propagated this recently on a Patreon video. Um, but yeah, I just had this like huge vine of runner and I chopped that all up into node cuttings that are now in my propagation box. But I'm just hoping that now I'm going to get some growth that is actually going to give me leaves and not runners and can just grow up this pole nicely because these are so beautiful when they are bushy plants. And I just really want mine to get there one day, so. We shall see how it goes. I am fertilizing this one with Osmo Coat. Oh, I just noticed we have a new little growth point down here. Can you guys, 
I'll try to get in focus. There's a new growth point way down there. I am fertilizing this plant with Osmo Coat. A slow release fertilizer. That's what I've been using for most of my plants on moss poles because I usually water them in the shower. They get a good flush, they get a good uh, fertilization that way, and then the moss pole also gets moistened. And this actually stays pretty moist in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. If I just have moss poles out in the open in my house, they grow, they dry out um, in it within like a couple of days. But if I have them in my cabinet, they stay pretty moist for like several days, sometimes even up to getting close to a week so yeah I mean I feel like it's in optimal conditions but we shall see if I actually start getting some nice growth coming out or if I'm still just gonna get runners I'm very curious okay so next we know her <laughs> If you have been on my channel before, then you have definitely seen my Thai constellation many of times. We have been, oh my god, something that looked like a dead threat on him. I have sprayed him down preventatively, but I wouldn't be shocked because he does live in the bedroom where the thrips are, so oh, let's hope that that doesn't happen. Anyways, yes, I have had this plant for a long time now, probably two and a half years. Yeah, probably about two and a half years. Um, this is my first like rare plant that I purchased when I was getting into plants and I remember I was so excited about it. I bought him for $60 and I thought that that was so expensive. Um, if, if you're new here, you might be wondering like, I've had this plant for two and a half years. Why does it only have four leaves? <laughs> um, that is because this plant has rotted about four or five times on me. I can't even keep track anymore. I have a whole playlist on specifically this plant and its journey of like root rot and being repotted and repropagated and all of that. So definitely check that out if you're interested. But yeah, I've had a really hard time with this plant regarding root rot. We are currently propagating in perlite once again, and we do have a big juicy root right there. So I'm very happy to see that. Perlite is my favorite method of propagation. I almost always get roots when I propagate with perlite. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm not sure what my plan is gonna be with this plant once it's fully rooted. Um, I get comments all the time telling me what I should pot it in. Uh, a lot of people seem to think I should just go back to a chunky potting mix, which I might because when this plant used to rot in potting mix, um, I was more experienced and I probably uh, mix a better potting mix now. Um, so I might do that. Uh, I also get a lot of comments people telling me to put him in pond, so I don't know. And then part of me wants to put him back in Lekka. That's only failed for me once, so I don't know you guys. I know people got so mad in that video when when I said that I wanted to put him in Lekka. Right now, he's doing well, propagating in perlite, and yeah, I would say that this is has been a difficult plant for me in the sense that it's constantly rotted, but it's been a very tough plant for me in the sense that I've always been able to revive it and bring it back and it's still with me today. Um, I am emotionally attached to this plant because like I said it was the first like rare plant that I got and I was so excited about it. I remember I would just constantly be watching it. You know we shall push on and hopefully the next time I repot him it is going to be the permanent time. Okay, so next I actually have one of my newest Monstera. Look at how fun this one is. Oh my goodness, I dig this plant so much. This is my Monstera Subpinata. I think I'm finally getting that name right. I couldn't get it in my head for the past few months, but I think that we've got it now, Monstera Subpinata. Um, yeah, and it has these kind of like palm-like fronds. Um, it's a very different looking Monstera from what I have in my collection, uh, very different from my whole collection as a whole actually. Um, the plant that looks like this the most that I have would be my Philodendron Tortum. Um, but anyways, yeah, I just, I just think that this is so fun how different it is and I think it's gonna be so amazing to watch it grow and watch the leaves get more mature and larger. This was never on my wish list or anything. It kind of fell, fell into my lap through a friend um, and I'm really grateful it did because yeah, I just, I actually really love it and really vibe with the way it grows and the leaf shape and it's just something different and fun. Monsteras are interesting because they're so diverse. Like 
yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy how different they look. This is a new leaf that actually just came in a week or two ago, probably a couple of weeks ago now. That's what it looks like. And this just lives in my bedroom, doesn't get any special conditions really, and seems to be doing well. It will get very droopy when it's thirsty, so I just water it when I kind of see that happening or when I just know that this is completely dry. Um, but yeah, so far it's been very easy for me and I'm just really excited to see it grow and get more mature. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna talk about, I'll just put like B-roll or a clip somewhere of it because I cannot move it at the minute and that is my Monstera Dubia. So I have been talking about this plant a little bit lately. I recently posted a video um, making a moss plank for it where I repotted it and gave it this moss pole plank situation. Like it was, it's like a flat moss pole that I made um, so that it can climb that because they are shingling plants and it just had completely taken over the tiny moss pole that I had given it. I got this plant as a very, very small cutting and I honestly thought that I was gonna lose it because because I didn't really know how to take care of it and it didn't really look that great. Um, so I stuck that little moss pole in there and I just kind of let it be and didn't really fuss with it. And then suddenly I started noticing new growth and then before I knew it, I had pushed out multiple new vines and yeah, had completely overtaken the moss pole. It was actually growing on the pegboard in my IKEA cabinet at one point. Uh, when I moved, I had to remove it. But yeah, now it is on that moss plank and I'm so excited to see it grow. As you can see, it does have a new leaf that's unfurling, which doesn't look like amazing, I will say. I think maybe it's just like the adjustment to, uh, first of all, living outside of the cabinet and second of all, the repot and just everything that I've done to it. But I can already see new growth point coming out and uh, as soon as it grows just a little bit more then I can kind of guide it more towards the moss plank and it can grow up there and I'm very excited to see that. I hope that one day I'm able to get more mature leaves on this plant. Monstera dubia is an interesting one because the mature leaves look extremely different than the juvenile leaves. I know a lot of people actually prefer the juvenile leaves um, but I'm just excited to see how mature I can get this. It will just be interesting to see the leaves change at all. So yeah, I'm very excited. I feel like right now in my plant collection, I'm kind of in a space where I've set up a lot of my plants for growth. Like I've given a lot of plants moss poles. I've just kind of brought my collection to the place where I'm kind of establishing everyone for growth. And then over the next couple of years, we'll really be able to reap the benefits of the work that I've put in because because plants are gonna start climbing and hopefully I'll get more mature leaves and it'll just be really cool to see. So I'm very excited for what the next couple of years have in store, even the next like six months to a year, I think that we're gonna see some really cool things. So yeah, very excited about that. Okay, and then the last one you guys is right behind me here. We cannot forget about her. This is my Monstera Albo. As you can see, I post a lot about this plant as well because I'm just so thrilled about how well it is growing. I kind of struggled with this plant for a while as well. I got it as a cutting, um, how long ago? A year and a half ago maybe? Um, and it didn't really do much for the first year, honestly, it didn't. It's been like the past six, six to eight months that it's really taken off. Um, and now I'm getting this beautiful marbling variegation on several of the leaves and I'm just really happy with it. I do have this one on a self-watering moss pole. Ooh, it's dry, I need to water that. Um, and yeah, she's doing really well. I'm so excited that she's climbing. She's really latched on to the moss pole, which is just amazing to see. And this is actually an extension. So I do have one more extension for this that I will be putting on once I get a few more leaves, I guess. I love the way that these look once they get bigger. And I feel like I've like put in the patience and put in the work and um, I'm finally getting to a place where she is looking like a larger plant. This one lives in my bedroom. It does have supplemental light from a, a mother uh, plant spectrum grow light that I have in there. Um, but as for humidity, it's not super high in there or anything. I do have my humidifier in there because of the, the baseboard heating and because it's a small room, it does need a little bit of extra help, but it doesn't go above 
um, like the high 50s or 60%, I would say. And it seems to be super happy with that, doing awesome. So yeah, I feel like this is a good one to end the video off with. It just makes me very happy. It's so pretty to see. I feel like Monstera Albo is such a classic plant. Like it's always going to be beautiful to me. And yeah, I guess this is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to chat with you. Let me know what your favorite Monstera to grow is. I'm very curious about that. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you like crazy and I will see you in the next one. Bye.